So my topic is, you can't legislate attitudes and mindsets. And so where does this come from? A couple of weeks ago, I had this series of events that occurred in a 48-hour period. It started on a Sunday morning when I went to a breakfast talk given by one of the Freedom Riders from Freedom Summer 61, 1961. The next day, I was grading essays written by my students, my MBA students, on a diversity case study that uh, they had been asked to analyze. And I was really struck by some of the stories that the women in my class shared about their experiences. I didn't ask them to tell me, but they shared some things that had occurred in their careers that were really disturbing. The next morning, uh, listening to NPR, I heard a piece on um, the issues surrounding sexism in Silicon Valley. And also, the same piece talked about the alarmingly low percentage of African Americans in the high-tech industry in this country. And then, a day or two later, the Wall Street Journal did a piece on women in board positions, and that their analysis showed that only those companies where the CEOs were women had a more representative um, number of women on the boards. And so this took me back to my first HR job, which I did in 1992 when I moved from finance into HR to become a diversity manager for the finance organization. It really got me reflecting on how much has changed and that it strikes me that perhaps what we do is we view legislation and policies and practices and training as an obstacle that in the workplace we need to find a way to work around and that what I think HR really needs to do is think of these, uh, think of the attitudes and the mindsets as the obstacles that we need to find a way to work around so that we are truly recruiting and developing and retaining the best talent that is available to us. And that if we can't crack this nut in the United States, I don't know how we can ever be successful globally because the diversity issues there are just far greater and more complex. Mm -hmm.